When you get to a new place by boat, there's always a couple things that you have to do first. For example, finding the nearest market and reprovision on fresh produce, finding a place to get a hot shower. But the most important thing for us is finding a place to fill up on water. Because our boat is very weight sensitive, so there's just no physical way of carrying water for six months or something like that. And this is before we got our water maker, mind you. Here in Bahia de Caracas, it was fairly easy because we just had to paddle in to Puerto Amistad, the little yacht club, and fill up at the little dock there. Still, since we didn't have a working outboard for our sinking dinghy, we had to pay attention to the tides because the tides in Rio Chone, the river that we were anchored in, went up to six knots depending on the moon. So sometimes we would have to get out into town in the middle of the night or wait five hours until we could do what we planned to do for the day. Cruising is not always simple, especially not if you're living La Vida Broca. And now guys, take a second and appreciate the shirt James is wearing because we reopened our campaigns on bonfire.com. So to all of you that haven't done it yet, Go get yourself a Zingara crew shirt. And the rest of you, let's go and explore Ecuador together. So this is Equatorian breakfast. It's uh, soup with cilantro, onion, potato, uh, and fresh tuna. I mean, they serve it every day, and it's two dollars and fifty cents. I think it's um, it's not tuna. She said there is only that one fish they make it with, and it's not tuna. Oh, really? It's a different mm -hmm. fish. Una pregunta: El pescado aquí no es tuna? ¿Cómo se llama el pescado? Atún. Abacora. Ah, abacora. Yeah, abacora is tuna. Sí. Okay. This fish soup is super good. We're getting yellow fever shots now. Can you explain why? Because the Ecuadorians don't want us to jeopardize the safety of their people with bringing any kind of sickness, illness to them. Spreading infections all over the place. How much is it going to cost us? Nothing. And how long did it take for us to check in? Like half an hour. They all came over. First, uh, a woman from the, the health ministry, she was checking our canned food and our medications for stuff that's over date, expired, which is practically everything. So she was just like, oh, okay. And then the guy from, what was he? Like the migration? He was the migration came in, asked some questions and was gone pretty quickly and then the, the port captain, not the port captain himself, but uh, somebody from the port, how do you say Capitania? Yeah. How do you say Capitania? Capitania de Puerto. Now, how do you say it in English? Captain. The port captain's office. So we're going out today to the clinic to get free shots for yellow fever and a couple other things. I think they're going to give us a few shots and then uh, They'll give us a little book, so we have that with us no matter where we go, which we need for this part of the country, this part of the world, I'm sorry. So we went to the hospital in the town, and we're both super surprised how clean and organized it was, that nobody had to wait more than 15 or 20 minutes to get treated. And when the nurse called us up, James was surprised that she didn't even ask for health insurance or papers or anything like that. She just gave us the medical treatment that we required and sent us back home. And part of traveling is seeing how other countries do things and also what could be improved in our own countries. You look a little white. Fuck off. Buddy Ariosto, say hi, bud. Yeah. 
This is my buddy, man, my, mi hermano. He helps us out, he drives us in. This has been such a cool experience in Puerto Amistad with uh, Ariosto. He's been helping us get a motor, so we are uh, going to the other marina to try to find him. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> That one was cool, dude. Yeah, I don't think uh, Kai gets really a solution for us. Let's check out the, the motor. Yeah. I didn't want a four-stroke, but it's pretty new. It's in it's in great shape. Yo prefiero dos tiempo, pero. Ah, uh, este de cuatro. Sí. Uh -huh. Su, su dueño por este. Me estaba diciendo setecientos. Y el cinco. También tiene un 5, ¿verdad? Uh, no, no, ¿Es de sí. dos tiempos o de cuatro también? Tengo un 5, dos tiempos. Tengo un 15 también, pero... No, 15 es demasiado. demasiado. Pero el 5 sería interesante también. Mm, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Yo creo que no es 5, es 10. No, 10 es demasiado también. 5 es como... Un 5 está bien. Está bien. O un 6 también. 5, 6, 8 es máximo. All right, everybody, say hi to Elio. Ariosto brought us over to Elio, and Elio's got this motor for us. It is a two and a half horsepower, four stroke Yamaha. Yamaha is a really good motor. And uh, this one looks really clean, and he wants 700 bucks for it, which for here in Ecuador, that's a good price. The thing is, it's kind of heavy. It weighs about as much as my four horse motor. And I'm thinking that maybe I can get a two stroke that's gonna be a little lighter that I can get a little more power out of. So. I'm gonna wait on it just for now and see what's gonna happen with um, the motors of Ariosto's brother. You can tell the level of despair. At that point, we would have taken anything to get rid of the part about. Damn, this is a good motor. It's not really powerful and it's heavy, and I'd go with electric anyways. Well, that's gonna be like $1,500. That's a, no, you know what, that's double. It's not too bad. I'd almost rather pay fifteen hundred and get an electric one, torpedo one. But how the hell are we gonna get it here? So last night, the Kimster and I went on a mission to find the little dimples on my boat from the iron nails that the boat was built with. They're just headless nails that are tapped into the wood. Well, as the boat gets cold and hot and moves in the water, it slowly pushes those nails out and it makes a little dimple and if soon enough it'll push through the fiberglass and then water will intrude and it'll screw, screw your boat up and uh we found a couple so we marked them with a little x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x and look at this all those damn X's everywhere. X's, 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 X's. Holy shit. Look at this one. Look at this hull. Look at all the X's on it. This is insane. This is too much work. I've decided to sell the boat and get into real estate. I have not broken the news to the crew yet, but it'll happen soon. James has been um, drilling holes in the deck all day long. I've been working on a computer doing all kinds of stuff on a website and Patreon. And so it's getting dark already. Wow, it is dark already. Nice it's late. So James just got in, finished work, and said, Hey, babe, I want to get rid of the fridge. I said, Well, yeah, you go ahead. Let's get rid of the fridge. I'm sick of it too because we run out of propane again today. So everything is melting in there and going bad now and we can't cook. And it's been two weeks that we uh, get a new bottle of propane so, or a new tank of propane, the big ones. So that's ridiculous.
Uh, so I was minding my business and he starts screwing that thing apart and is determined to get it at it about today. It's late already, mm -hmm. don't you think? I just want it out of the fucking boat. I hate this thing. I fucking hate this thing. You know how much crap has been ruined because of this thing? You know how much bullshit I've been through trying to find propane, pay for propane? Here, they don't even have small tanks of propane. You have to get this giant tank of propane, flip it upside down, open up both propane bottles and fill it yourself, which is one, dangerous, and two, ridiculous. I'm done, I'm done. We don't need, dude, one bottle of propane lasts us two weeks. Fuck that, dude. No way. I'm not doing it anymore. I'd rather have no fridge. And here, we, while we're here, we can, we can figure something out. There's got to be something we can do. Or we just live without a fridge. So this, this is how this is put together. This is a big ass piece of wood that goes back. And then there's a back panel on it. And then there's this top panel on it. So I'm going to take all those apart. And then this thing should just come right out. And, and are I, we going to put it in a navigation station? The thing is, I don't know if this fucker will fit out the door. I think he might have put this in here when he did the hard top. We'll see. We might have to take the door off. Might have to take the hard top off. And then we can put in, yeah, we'll put in a little station for you to do your... We can put in a little office right here. A little U-sized office. Yeah. What I would like to do is get a fridge that fits right here. We get rid of this. And our fridge fits right there. I want to top load. We could we could make space. One of these for pantry and one of these for fridge, and then this will be our little navigation station because yeah. we don't need all the shit that's in our fridge. We don't need half that shit that's in there. We're keeping like this is tahini. That does not need to be cold. That doesn't need to be cold. Doesn't need to be cold. Doesn't need to be cold. Actually, when you open it, should olives? No. Oh yeah, kind of. No. Oh wow, look at that. I haven't been opening the, the fridge. The only thing we have in here is man mantequilla. Mantequilla. Mantequilla, which is butter. This does not need to be refrigerated. Okay, I got so your point. So basically what we're doing, we're getting rid of cold beer and milk. We can't have fresh milk. You know, are, you, are you feeling me? Mm. I feel you. Look what else is in here. Fucking... Fast Cure 5200, we, that doesn't need to be refrigerated. Well, actually, it lasts longer if it is, but. What else is in here? 